Black holes burp a lot. And we think that these burps can have a huge impact on how the entire universe has evolved. Now, of course, this burp does not come from inside the black hole itself, beyond the event horizon, because yeah, black holes are regions of space that are so dense that nothing, not even light, can escape. It comes from the regions around the black hole, outside the event horizon, where material can still happily orbit the black hole and gets accelerated to huge speeds, which makes it hot and causes it to glow so that we can see it. Now, if too much material builds up in those regions, then the pressure increases and the pressure has to be relieved somehow in a burp. And so some of that material is actually ejected back out and away from the black hole. Sometimes that's in what we call an outflow, just back out through the galaxy. But if there's a magnetic field around the black hole, then that material can get funneled up into a really tight jet. And it's these jets that can end up being way bigger than the entire galaxy that we even find a black hole in. For example, this galaxy, Hercules A, is a really famous example of this, with jets that span almost a million light years. To put this into perspective, if those jets were the size of the palm of your hand, then the galaxy in the middle would be the size of a pea. And the supermassive black hole in the center of that galaxy that's producing those jets would be smaller than an atom. But this month, a team of astronomers, OEAN collaborators, reported finding the longest black hole jet ever seen at 23 million light years long. It is absolutely huge. To put that into perspective, you know our galaxy, the Milky Way, of hundreds of billions of stars, of which the sun is just one towards the edge. The Milky Way is just 100,000 light years across, so you would need 230 Milky Way galaxies stacked back to back to span the length of these black hole jets. Now, OEAN collaborators dubbed these black hole jets Porphyrion, after the biggest giant in Greek mythology. And while it is incredibly cool to find the biggest of something out there in the universe, this discovery also has massive implications for how the universe has evolved and how galaxies and their supermassive black holes grow together. So, in this video, we're going to chat first about how OEAN collaborators found this giant black hole jet Porphyrion, second, the properties of Porphyrion and how it compares compares to all the other black hole jets that have been found. And third, what effect black hole jets of this size could have on the universe around them. Now you might have missed this research getting covered in the news, especially if you're in the UK. And when it comes to new discoveries like this, it's really important to see how different sources are actually covering the research so that you can fully understand it. That's where today's sponsor, Ground News, really shines. They make it simple to critically evaluate discoveries like this one by bringing together sources from around the world. So with over 35 outlets covering this story, Ground News lets me easily compare how some focus on the jet's physical properties, while others highlight how the jets could influence galaxy growth, making sure to also quote the scientist who said that. And with their Vantage Plan, which is what I use, it also gets you access to original reporting. It's a really powerful tool for anyone who wants to just be a little bit more discerning about the information that they're consuming. What I love about their platform is their NASA, their science, their space news coverage, which always means that I'm able to discover news stories that I may have missed otherwise, which is one of the main reasons that I continue to use Ground News. I've been partnered with Ground News for over a year now, and I'm genuinely thrilled that they continue to support this channel. They're completely subscriber funded, which means that they're free from the influence of any paid advertising, which is a rare find these days. So head to ground.news slash Dr. Becky, or you can scan the QR code up here and you'll get 40% off their top tier unlimited access vantage plan to stay informed, which brings the cost down to around about $5 a month. So thanks again to Ground News for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to chatting all about Porphyrion and start with how we and collaborators found this giant black hole jet. Well, it wasn't just one black hole jet that they found. It was over eight thousand of them, thanks to LOFAR, the Low Frequency Array Radio Telescope in Europe. LOFAR combines many radio light detectors together from the Netherlands and across Europe to make one giant radio telescope. Now, the bigger the telescope you have, the smaller the thing in the sky that you can see, i.e. your resolution is better, so you can spot things that are much further away. Plus, you're also more sensitive to lower light objects 
like ones that have their lights spread out over a large area because they're so big. Plus, LoFar lets you look at a huge area of sky at once. So if you're searching for very low light extended objects like radio jets, it's the perfect instrument to do this with. That's what Mustard and we and collaborators started to do back in 2018 with images taken by LoFar of over a quarter of the northern sky. So a huge amount of data to search through. So they used three different ways to search through all of this data. First, they just eyeballed the images themselves, picked out the really obvious ones. Then they used that to actually train a machine learning algorithm, i.e. an AI algorithm to hunt for more of these things. And then they also enlisted the help of the public on the website Radio Galaxy Zoo to help look for less obvious jets that the machine learning algorithm might have missed. And those members of the public made 5,647 new discoveries of radio jets, whereas their machine learning algorithm made 2,597 new discoveries, totaling 8,244 brand new discoveries of radio jets coming from the centres of galaxies where you've got a growing supermassive black hole that's burping up this material into the jet. Now originally this work was published back in May of this year, 2024, but they left out the discovery of Porphyrion from that paper in order to try and confirm what they suspected, which that it would be the biggest radio jet ever seen. So we and collaborators were the ones that went and grabbed more radio data, first from the giant meter wave radio telescope in India, then grabbed a visible light image from the dark energy spectroscopic instrument in Arizona, which found that the galaxy hosting this supermassive black hole that's producing these jets was 10 times heavier than the Milky Way, and then also got a spectrum of light of the galaxy using the Keck telescopes in Hawaii. Which brings me to section two of this video. What are the properties of Porphyrion? and how does it compare to all the other black hole jets that they found. So with the radio images of this jet, you can actually resolve the jet itself. So you can work out, okay, how big is this jet in terms of pixels on the image that we're seeing? But to know how physically big it actually is, you need to know how far away it is because either this could be a pretty normal sized jet really close to us, or a massive jet really far away just because of perspective. That's why we and collaborators use the Keck telescopes to get a spectrum of the light of the galaxy in the middle of that image that these radio jets are coming from. A spectrum is where you split the light into its rainbow, right? You get a trace of how much light at each wavelength you have. And using features in that spectrum of light, they could actually trace how much the light had been redshifted by the expansion of the universe. The more the light is redshifted, then the longer the light has been traveling through the expanding universe and therefore the further away that galaxy is. And we and collaborators found a redshift factor of 0.896 for this galaxy, meaning that that light has been traveling through the expanding universe for seven and a half billion years years. That's more than half of the universe's lifetime. In terms of distance, it means that that galaxy and its corresponding radio jets are 7.5 billion light years away or 2 billion trillion kilometers away. With that, you can then work out how big the jets truly are. And that's how we and collaborators got at that huge number of 23 million light years long. So how does this compare to the size of other radio jets that are known? Well, sadly, we can't directly compare to all those other 8,000 radio jets they found in low-far data because sometimes you can't even find a corresponding galaxy that these radio jets go with. It might be a little bit too faint. And then other times, you know, there's a galaxy there, but you don't have a spectrum for it to know what distance it's at. So you can't get at the true physical size of these jets. So we can't directly compare it to this one. But to give you an idea of range, the famous Messier 87, you know, the one that had an image of its central supermassive black hole taken by the Event Horizon Telescope, has jets that are just under 10,000 light years long. That's kind of on the small side though, like typically the most common length of a radio jet that we see is around about 100,000 light years long, with anything over 2 million light years long referred to as a giant radio galaxy. Before this, the largest known radio jet was 16 million light years long, again discovered by the same research team a few years ago. So you can probably see why Porphyrion got its name because at 23 million light years long, it really is the giant of the giants. To put this into perspective, 
even more. The length of these jets is about two thirds of the size of a typical cosmic void in the cosmic web. So if you map out the positions of all the galaxies we know of and just keep zooming out, the entire structure of the universe appears as this web or like a sponge-like structure with galaxies clumped together along filaments and at intersections with big voids in between where less galaxies are found. These voids do range in size, you know, from the smallest to the largest, which I have spoken about on this channel before, but typically they're most commonly around 32 million light years wide. So Porphyrion is comparable in size to the structures that make up the cosmic web, the structure of the entire universe. And if you stop to think for a minute what that actually means, it means that there is no place in the universe that is remote enough to be safe from the impacts of black hole jets. Which brings me to section three. What effect could black hole jets of this size have on the universe around them? So one of the key ideas in how galaxies evolve is that they co-evolve. They grow together with their supermassive black hole at their center. This is something I work on. So when I saw this discovery, I got very excited. Because if galaxies and their supermassive black holes grow together, there must be some process that regulates that growth that stops it somehow so that they don't just keep growing and growing and growing forever unchecked. With a black hole, we know that it's this burping process that keeps things in check. When too much material ends up in the surrounding regions, the pressure gets too great and it's released in an outflow or a jet. And so the black hole doesn't use it to grow. And the idea has always been that energy released by this outflow or this jet from the regions surrounding the black hole is also what eventually stops the galaxy from growing. It stops the galaxy from forming more stars eventually as well. Now, either that could be because the gas is expelled from the galaxy, so that outflow as it moves through the galaxy picks up the hydrogen gas that's fuel for more star formation and just takes it out of the galaxy entirely. Or perhaps the energy instead is used to heat up the gas. And if you've got hot gas that's got lots of energy and your molecules are moving around a lot, then they're not gonna collapse under gravity to become dense enough to ignite nuclear fusion and start to actually form a star. So either way, you stop stars from forming in your galaxy. The problem is, <laughs> evidence for that actually happening, like correlation between those two things and proving that it was actually the activity from the growing supermassive black hole are these outflows or jets that are doing this is sparse to say the least. We don't have a lot of it, or at least not stuff that's convincing enough to say that it is actually happening like universe wide across the entire galaxy population. So then one idea has been that, okay, well maybe it's because the energy from the outflow jet is not going like in the galaxy itself, but perhaps into the cosmic web. And that perhaps the cosmic web is feeding fresh gas to the galaxy all the time. And if you can disrupt that feeding somehow, that would regulate galaxy growth. But the cosmic web is huge compared to galaxies in the supermassive black holes in their center. Remember like the size of the palm and the pea and the atom. So that idea has always been cast in a little bit of doubt because again, the jets, they weren't considered to be big enough to affect the cosmic web as a whole until Porphyrion, which is 66% of the size of a cosmic void. It's at the cosmic web scales. It could inject energy into the cosmic web, disrupting this flow of gas, not just to the galaxy that this black hole lives in, but perhaps even to neighboring galaxies that live around this one along these filaments of the cosmic web. Plus to have jets that are that long, the black hole has to have been growing for a really long time. Constantly powering these jets with a fresh supply of gas inwards towards the black hole, which is not something we think is typical for how black holes grow. With these outflows and jets being set up, that regulates the growth of the black hole. It sends a load of material out and away from it and disrupts that nice growth process. That also shuts down the outflow and the jet as well. So the growth period time for black holes we think is really short and the lifetime of jets and outflows we also think 
is really short, except not in Porphyrian's case. For them to be this long, those radio jets, that black hole has to have been active and powering those jets for over a billion years. That is so far from what I'd expect. Like typically if you're like, what's well, a black hole lifetime? I'd be like, a few hundred thousand years, maybe a million years, if you're lucky. So everything about this system is weird and new and big. And I haven't been this excited about a new discovery in a really long time. To put this into perspective, perspective? Now originally, Porphyron, Porphyron? Oh, to structures in the cosmic web, the cosmic web, two structures in the cosmic web. So Porphyrion is is what mitosis is. So, and then a pea. Should I say like a garden pea, like a green pea? Does that need clarifying, or do people like I don't mean a we, a pea, a green pea, a garden pea, a vegetable pea? I'm just gonna say pea.